today uh, i bring you a presentation on the fifth semester course human resource management unit 1 which is entitled as human resource management meaning significance and objectives uh, friends uh, you are aware that public administration is a very broad and wide field and there are many branches of public administration one of these branches is known as public personnel administration which in modern times is now known as human resource management so we are today going to learn some introductory aspects of this particular topic human resource management we cover so many things uh, such as meaning concept significance objectives the differences between personnel management human resource management etc as i have already mentioned human resource management is a branch of the broad field of management uh, as students of public administration public administration and public management are used interchangeably of course when we use the term management it has little of little more of private sector orientation than administration but this difference semantic difference uh, conceptual difference being slightly there uh, we proceed with the presentation human resource management is many things if you ask the question what is human resource management you have to give so many replies one pertinent reply is that it is a discipline discipline does not mean rules of good behavior discipline means a subject of study so you are studying as a part of your ba you are studying various subjects or various disciplines like public administration political science economics etc similarly human resource management which was earlier part of management or public administration has now become an independent discipline also an independent subject of study also uh it is as a discipline or a subject of study it is known as applied behavioral science what it deals with is the behavioral aspects of management management has so many aspects one important aspect is about the behavior of the managers uh and in particular the behavior of the employees working in public organization that's our focus human resource management is now an integrated discipline which is a combination of three sub units which were done the, the these three sub units are three sub areas were done by three different functionaries in organizations particularly in the industrial organizations these three units are unit level officers were personal management headed by personal manager industrial relations headed by some ir expert labor laws headed by a labor welfare officer these were the three distinct functions which were separately dealt with but now in the modern approach these three are combined into one called human resource management so the components of human resource management thus is a combination of three things personnel management plus industrial relations plus labor laws this is one way of telling what human resource management is human resource management is also a profession profession means something which is done by people a practical activity there is a profession of doctors there is a profession of engineers there is a profession of chartered accountants there is a profession of teachers similarly human resource managers hr managers are also professionals now we have to see what a profession means profession has four or five important features one a profession is one which is basically practice oriented it's not theory oriented you will be doing mostly rather than talking or writing or thinking of course these activities are also there but any profession is ultimately the ultimate objective of profession is practice implementation of the knowledge or the concepts so thus 
a profession of HRM means it is a practice oriented one. Second feature of profession is professional association. You know, people belonging to medical profession have Indian Medical Council which supervises. Medical doctors associations are there, engineers associations are there. Similarly, there are professional associations for HRM uh, functionaries known as National HRD Network, Indian Management Association, these are the professional associations. So, to be called a professional, you should be a member of this. Uh, the purpose of this is you will meet with fellow professionals, you will discuss the important developments in the profession and you will be advanced up to date with the latest knowledge and practices. Another important feature of a profession is journal. Journal is a publication which is which carries the writings or essays or articles written by experts on the subject. Next important thing is code of ethics. Professionals are those people who do not behave the way they like. They are bound by certain rules and regulations which are known as code of ethics. So, these things together combine into what is known as profession. So, HRM does is also a profession. Uh, one more way in which we can say what HRM is, is a modified version of personal management. Earlier there was a subject called personal administration, personal management. These days we are talking about human resource management. So, it is a modified version. So, there is a something of the original something is added. Now, as a human resource management, it is more proactive rather than reactive, it is integrated, it is, it treats human being as a resource. What it means is under personal administration, uh, the human being employee was considered to be a factor of production like we talk in economics about different factors of production, land, labor, capital, labor. So, the HRM considers human beings as human resource. Resource is a combination of two words, re plus source means you can use that again and again. So, factor of production is something land when it is used, if you are uh, raising crops, the land fertility will come down. But unlike that, human being is a resource, more you use, more useful or valuable the, the person becomes. So, this is the concept underlying the human resource management. Uh, it is also a shift from HRM was earlier considered a staff function, advisory function, now it is considered a line function. And uh, uh, this human resource management orientation or kind of thinking, changed thinking first appeared in the multinational corporations. Uh, the foreign multinational companies, they brought in some of these practices of human resource management. Now, these new practices which were brought from MNCs were first into the uh, private sector companies, but now they are also getting into the public sector companies as well as the general administration of the government. Human resource management can be explained as a set of functions. Human res what human resource managers do is what is known as a function of the human resource managers. So, we can understand what is human resource management by looking at the functions the HR managers are performing. These functions are broadly of two types. One set of functions is known as managerial functions. The other set of functions is known as substantive functions. Managerial functions are those functions which are performed by all kinds of managers. Now, in an industry or in an organization, you may have HR managers, you may have finance managers, you may have materials management managers in a manufacturing company. So, these are all managers, all of them are doing certain basic functions which are more or less common to all of them. This common set of functions are known as managerial functions, which as students of public administration, you are familiar with posed carb, P O S D C O R B, as a coined word of Luther Gallic, who tries to give what are the functions of managers. So, like every manager, 
HR managers also perform planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting and budgeting functions. So, here there is not much difference between HR manager and finance manager as far as these functions are performed. But there is a second set of functions which are essential functions, the more technical functions of HR managers. So, these are the these functions including include acquiring human resources which is like recruitment and selection of people to, to be taken into the organization, their training and development, this is the second function. Third, their maintenance means paying them remuneration, salary, allowances and all that. Then uh, developing them, increasing their potential to be more useful. Every human being is a potential, every human being has lot of potential. Uh, this potential, uh, it will be fully used only when you train the person properly. So, this set of function is also one of the HR functions. Then one more function is disciplining. Uh, employees are likely to indulge in indisciplinary activities which ultimately mar the image of the government as well as uh, destroy the, 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 fun the objectives of the organization may not be achieved, uh, achieved. Therefore, employees have to be disciplined, this is one more function. And the last function of HRM, substantive function of HRM is, it is employee separation. No employee will be perpetually working in any organization. They may be uh, retiring or maybe sometimes uh, they, they, may, uh, they may die accidentally or otherwise they may be uh, taking retirement uh, due to health grounds. So, all such uh, you know possibilities are there. So, an employee has to be separated out from the organization when he is not healthy or when he is invalidated, he is invalid, he is not able to perform his normal functions or when he reaches a certain age beyond which we all think that a person cannot uh, be productively employed. So, this set of function is the last set of function. Thus, HR managers substantive functions are to acquire human resources, develop human resources, maintain human resources, discipline human resources, motivate human resources and separate human resources. This is another way of knowing what human resource management is. Uh, and uh, human resource management deals with all functions related to the employees in formal organizations. Uh, it is not uh, about uh, people working in clubs or you know informal organizations, it is basically about formal organizations, maybe the government organizations, government departments, government companies, other public sector undertakings uh, like that. Now, before we finish this part of the uh, discussion about the meaning of human resource management, we are left with one important crucial uh, concept known as HR. HR stands for human resource. So, what do we exactly mean by human resource? So, in simple way one can say uh, human resource means employees, uh, but that is employees what, what of employees? So, the, the more elaborate way of telling this is, we are dealing with not simply human beings, but we are dealing with the following aspects of the human beings. Number one, the knowledge they have. So, HR basically means the knowledge of the human beings working in the organization. Number two, their experience. So, experience wise people may be different, more, more the experience, more useful one is, more knowledgeable, more useful knowledge, experience, skills. So, for every job there are certain skills, skills are nothing but uh, when you apply your knowledge in a very keen observant uh, and in a learning mode, you, you, you come to uh, achieve some level of uh, specialization that is what is known as skill. And one more aspect of HR, HR means knowledge, uh, experience, skills as I said and then abilities. Abilities can be mental, physical, emotional too. 
so the abilities mental abilities or memory and all that capacity for recalling some information uh, analyzing uh, you know making sense of the data huge data that that's mental function so mental abilities so human resource also means certain physical abilities maybe that people who are physically uh, incapacitated their uh, physical abilities may be less uh, but th this is also important so physical abilities and emotional abilities also emotional abilities means ability to do certain things ability not to do certain things so we have certain preconceived notions uh, you think that uh, eating something is not not proper for you doing something is not proper for you so these are emotional kinds of ability so all the same abilities are also important one more aspect of hr is the attitude attitude means mental predisposition uh, some of us have favorable attitudes some of us may have unfavorable attitudes say for example uh, if if you start some uh, you know light music program you know somebody's attitude is such that hey, what what music baba why are you wasting time so this is an attitude attitude is the the predisposition your natural state of uh, you know liking something or not liking one more aspect of human resource management is the aptitude aptitude comes from aptness aptness means correctness so correct you are how exact you are now some of us are very observant when we see things we can recall what we have seen exactly ditto the way we have seen but some people don't so there is a difference in aptitude so this is also an important component of hr therefore human resource management deals with the knowledge experience skills abilities aptitude attitude of employees so this is the function of human resource management now to look at some standard definitions of uh, human resource management uh, it is said that michael armstrong one important uh, writer of a textbook on human resource management says human resource management is a strategic approach to acquiring developing managing motivating and gaining the commitment of the organization's key resources key resources here means human beings so what is it it's a strategic approach a strategic approach is an approach which is long term the opposite word of strategic is tactical if you are doing something for immediate requirement it is known as tactical if you are doing for a long term so with a long term vision if you are doing it is known as strategic approach so human resource management is basically an approach it's a strategic approach approach applied to what for acquiring developing managing motivating and gaining commitment of employees so how best you acquire human beings how you develop them how you manage them in the organization how you motivate them to perform uh, challenging tasks and how do you gain their commitment this is all 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 such things together are known as human resource management according to michael armstrong another definition is that it's a strategic and coherent approach to the management of human resources so it's both not only strategic but also a coherent approach coherent approach means there are so many aspects say for example you are doing something to train them something to give them salary something to discipline them so there should be coherence between all these things all these thing functions must be moving in unison so you may be doing disciplining you are a great disciplinarian everybody is disciplined but people are not motivated so coherent means everything should move in tandem in move in a unison at the same level this this is what it is scope of human resource management varies according to the size of the organization it also varies depending on it's a public sector organization or private sector organization there are so many uh, factors that contribute to uh, changes in the scope of human resource management basically human resource management has three broad areas one is personal administration which comprises of uh, acquiring human resources or selecting employees and all training and all uh, motivating this this is one second is industrial relations 
industrial relations means employer employee relations you know ensuring that the employer which in this public administration it can be government or a company government company so the relations between the employer and the employee and finally labor welfare labor welfare is uh, you know the employee welfare employees have to be taken care of particularly in industrial organizations there are lots of things to be done so all these three are important uh, components of uh, co that are coming up in the scope of hrm coming to the significance of uh, human resource management uh, very important thing is that human beings are the most important of the resources on planet earth even a ton of gold cannot match the worth of an individual you know we have had great uh, geniuses like uh, einstein uh, stephen hawking who was uh, completely crippled but his value to the science the scientific contributions are astounding and uh, they can revolutionize our thinking they may, they may save uh, lakhs and billions of crores of rupees by a simple idea like uh, we can give one example of uh, led lights which has uh, reduced the consumption of electricity this is all the products of human beings uh, now hr's importance is also more uh, as we are living in a knowledge economy today's economy now in our economy who makes money who is ruling us is not the fellow uh, with tons of money or uh, tons of gold and all that people with ideas are ruling us so therefore the employees today are not uh, the kind of uh, grease paint uh, workers uh, soiling sweating and all that but now uh, we have robotics we have automation we have you know intelligent workers are needed so therefore this is the context in which hrm becomes important earlier you can ride rough shot over employees but today it cannot be done uh, there are uh, many labor laws which need to be enforced and uh, therefore a trained hr expert is needed otherwise a company or an organization may violate you know the legally some binding thing is there if that is not done the the company owner or the government in this case may be punished uh, now one more important thing is hr is now becoming a earlier it was considered as a fringe activity insignificant activity but today there is a concept known as strategic hrm in uh, companies particularly in manufacturing organizations including the government uh, board of directors is the highest uh, body that runs the industry uh, or an organization in that there are hr experts now so this is what is known as strategic hrm uh, now one more thing is that the human resource was earlier considered to be a cost center means uh, you know employees because of employees you are spending money you are losing money and all that but modern conception is that if we effectively use employees they will earn more money than what they would consume say for example on an employee you are spending 100 rupees uh, on an uh, if as a unit of measurement if you take you know the profit center means that 100 he will produce into 1000 2000 unlimited so this is now the changed thinking and one more thinking is that hrm is now uh, undergoing big transition because of technological advances and uh, now companies are outsourcing many things now people are allowed to work from home so the context of human resource management is completely changing uh, with uh, tele working uh, outsourcing and all that so under these circumstances the importance of significance of hrm is all the more same uh, all the more increasing now uh, quickly we come to evolution human resource management is not a subject which has come off suddenly it has a long chain of evolution the first uh, stage was putting out stage uh, cottage industry all that was there before industrial revolution so this function was performed by the master craftsmen who used to take care of the needs of the other craftsmen second factories have come up due to industrial revolution so big factories large number of employees are working so personal administration emerge so this is the second stage now the third stage of hrm evolution is hrm stage human resource management stage where three things as i mentioned earlier are integrated the last thing is strategic human resource management stage we are at that stage where human resource management is considered a strategic function it's as important as a production function as important as marketing or finance function it can create lot of wonderful effects good effects for the companies uh now we have uh 
one more aspect that is nature of human resource management. Human resource management is a function which is performed by human resource managers. Not only that, it is also performed by every other manager. Every manager has his uh, subordinates, he has to motivate them, he has to discipline them. So, these functions in a way every manager does. Therefore, we say that it is an inherent function of management. Every manager does it. It it's thus also a pervasive function and it is a people centric function. So, here the focus is on the human beings. So, this is one more aspect and uh, human resource management is a continuous process. It is not that uh, HR manager uh, does uh, some recruitment and takes rest for one month and uh, next thing happens after one month. It is not that every time there is some or the other aspect. So, it is a continuous process. So, somewhere recruitment is going on, somewhere retirement is going on, somewhere training is going on. So, in a huge organization all these functions happen uh, simultaneously or cyclically. So, thus it is a continuous function. Now, we have objectives also. The objectives of uh, human resource management can be classified under four headings, professional objectives, organizational objectives, legal objectives and human resource related objectives. Professional objectives is to uh, make human resource management highly professional. Highly professional means highly disciplined, highly knowledge based, uh, highly uh, learning based, learning and relearning. This is professional aspect. Organizational means the objective of HRM is to facilitate the achievements of the goals of the organization. So, if it is a college, the goal of the organization is effective teaching. So, HR should contribute to that. There are also legal objectives. So, there are number of laws made by the government like Minimum Wages Act, Payment of Wages Act. So, these two just take the example of Minimum Wages Act, you cannot pay less than a particular amount. So, it is a violation. So, these legal objectives have to be fulfilled and finally, human objectives. So, human being has to be treated not as just a factor of production like money or lifeless things, he has to be seen. Now, the constitution also says that we have to, constitution gives every body, every individual in the country uh, the right to be, right to be dignified, right to receive dignified treatment. So, the human objectives means to treat employees fairly like human beings, not as animals or machines. So, this is one more thing. Uh, the objectives also include uh, the team integration, when people work together there are bound to be some problems. So, to uh, overcome these problems you have to create a team spirit, a kind of we feeling and uh, they have to, HR managers have to promote work culture. Work culture is uh, respect for work, you know um, there are many people who lack this, you know respect for work is people who take work as something which is uh, you know unwanted. You see, when does the work come to an end? So, work should be enjoyed. So, if this, if an employee feels my work is dear to me, my work is giving me lot of, uh, you know, energy, lot of uh, satisfaction. That kind of thing is work culture, and uh, and then increase using full potential. All human beings have unlimited potential, so there is a need to tap all the potential of the human beings. And one more thing is employee empowerment. Employee empowerment is a, you know a feeling that an employee feels that he is boss of the organization. There is a concept known as the concept of ownership. If there is a director, director is not there, but the lowest fellow also thinks he has a responsibility like the director, this is then. So, these are the functions. Uh, in conclusion, let me just uh, quickly wrap up. Uh, now, in this lecture we have discussed uh, various things relating to human resource management, which was earlier known as personal administration. Uh, human resource management is a new orientation which is uh, going to strategic levels. Human resource management is a subfield of management or public administration. It was earlier familiar as public personal management. Uh, its value is not sufficiently recognized. If you use professional human resource management, you are bound to achieve greater results both in public organizations and private organizations. Of course, there are the discussion is incomplete, presentation is incomplete without mentioning one or two important problems that are there in this area. Now, there is no sufficient recognition 
for the HR function, both in the government and private. Of course, in the private, it is increasingly being recognized. In the government, still, uh, it is considered to be a fringe function. There are many occasions when somebody is not, uh, you know, there is a disciplinary case on him. The fellow is not, uh, you know, behaving properly. As a punishment, they are put to put in in this particular department. This this attitude should change. And uh, human resource management, uh, if it is professionally used. Uh, with all the support of the top management or the higher level officials, it can bring in lot of results, lot of benefits for the functioning of the organizations and administration, whether it is public or private. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.